much sand all over me. Hello everybody and welcome to Oman. This is a place that has been on my bucket list ever since I fell in love with travel. It's just a unique country that I can't even really put into words and I don't even know what it is that excites me about it so much, but it's just one of those places that seems so far off and mysterious that not many people have been to. It's not really on any established tourist track, but I feel like it's very deserving of having a place there. Now, obviously I'm not in some cool market. I'm not by the waterfront, I'm not by an old fort. And that's because it is currently Sunday and on every Sunday, our days often look like this. Don't you have to edit? <laughs> Thank you to all of our diehard followers who are still watching our videos at this point. This is how Brie makes us spend every single Sunday because she procrastinates all week long, even though <laughs> we talk about, and we even set up specific days to work, but for some reason it doesn't matter when it's Sunday, that's when the real work happens. So. I'm currently sitting here doing a little bit of research and planning out our next couple of days. We're only here for about four days, but we've got an awesome, awesome schedule and we are super excited to show you what we have planned here. Good morning from day two in Muscat. Yesterday I ended up just editing our video till the very last minute of the night, so we didn't actually do anything. So today we have to hit pretty much everything on our hit list, which is gonna be the mosque of Kaboos. Yeah. It's called Caboose? I don't know how to pronounce it. We're gonna hit the mosque, and then one of the markets once it cools down a little bit because I think it's about 90 degrees out right now. So we looked up some fun facts this morning about, I don't know, Omani customs and like what to wear when you're out. And obviously if I'm going to a mosque, I have to be completely covered. So that's why I'm wearing this, which is what I have. It's uh, just a buff. And Jeff suggested that I wear our travel towel, but it's a little bit too slippery and I'm worried if it falls out, we might get in trouble. So I think I'm gonna roll with this if it's acceptable. We both have to be covered from ankle to wrist. So we're wearing pretty much everything that we have available. It's gonna be a little warm. Yeah. I look insane. No visible tattoos. So hopefully it works out. Before that, we gotta go get breakfast. It's apparently a pretty big deal here. There are brunch spots all over town. So we're actually really excited to get some awesome Western food, which we felt was a little lacking in Dubai surprisingly. So let's go explore. This is our amazing rental car. Since we're not going up to the mountains and we're not gonna drive into the desert, we decided not to go with four wheel drive because it was actually exorbitantly expensive. Um, although when we did pick up the car, the guy tried to upsell us to a four wheel drive and it was much, much cheaper. So if you're looking at renting a car, maybe try that route. It's a bit riskier, but maybe you'll get a better deal. So this isn't really like a traditional Omani breakfast, but breakfast is a big deal here apparently and brunch places sell out far, far in advance. So if you try to come on a weekend, you are not gonna get a spot. And these bagels honestly look incredible and it reminds us of home a little bit. There's this place in Denver called Moe's Broadway Bagels that we loved. So being able to get a good bagel sandwich at an affordable price, just it just sounds so good, you know? And that's what we're doing. So we just saw this modern Oman bakery across the street and I mean, you just have to go. So one last pit stop before the mosque. So we decided to get a banana nut muffin, two homemade plain donuts, and then Jeff always has to get a butter croissant because he lives off these basically. Update, everything was amazing. So we went to the front desk before we left the hotel and asked if my buff was good enough to cover my hair and she said no. So it looks like it's back to good old travel towel to use as a head covering, a scarf, pretty much everything until I get a shema, so. Do you think I should wear like the clip forward or in the back maybe? You look great, like a babushka. All right, wouldn't be a one bag, one world video without some mistakes. So I guess maybe they're closed for Eid early. On Online it said that they're open basically all day until 10 p.m. Um, but we just tried to walk up and the guy said, no, no, they're closed at 11. It's 11.50, so we said come back tomorrow. Between eight and 11, they're open, so. We think it's Eid. We think it's Eid. Reduced hours. But if we find out, sense. we'll let you guys know. So when you try to plan your trip, you'll... Not be us. Yeah. It is time for round two of trying to go to the mosque. We are ready. Kind of. Kind of. 
and we bought a Shema. All right, we made it in. As you can see, I'm wearing this thing because Bri is now fully in a nabaya because her pants were a little slit open at the leg and it showed a little too much ankle. So there are military or police at the front and they tell you if you're dressed appropriately. So we had to go rent one. It only cost 2.5 Omani Rials. And uh, now I'm wearing this, which is quite hot actually. However hot you think you are, Jeff, you <laughs> know nothing. Now we opted not to get a guide, but they're everywhere. And I think it's about five Omani Rial and they take you around for 30 minutes because I think they said this place is over like 16,000 square meters or something like that. It's, it's huge. So we've got a limited amount of time. We're gonna hit all the big stuff if we can and we'll show you what we see. In 1992, the Sultan of Oman decided that they needed a Grand Mosque and he basically created this competition to see if someone could come up with a great design. And once they picked a winner, it took about six years to complete and it was finally completed on May 4th. And it celebrated 30 years of his reign at that point. So this thing is built of Indian sandstone and the structure is the second largest mosque in the world, which is crazy, it's huge. And it's able to accommodate 20,000 worshippers at one time, which is just staggering. I mean, the room is massive. The central dome that you see rises 160 feet and there is a 4,200 square foot carpet that is a single piece which was hand woven by hundreds of people. The guy who was talking to us, he's a volunteer, said it was 12 to 16 year olds that wove this thing and it took over 1 billion knots to weave this carpet, which is unreal. He said about 40 knots fit in the size of your fingertip. So that just puts it into perspective for you. But I'm sure everyone now is thinking about this insane chandelier. And we've got some crazy stats about this thing. So at the time they wanted to create the largest chandelier in the world and they succeeded. This thing is basically a small house. It is 45 feet tall and 26 feet wide and weighs in at nine tons. It's decorated with over 600,000 pieces of Swarovski crystal and it's trimmed with gold. And this is crazy. I couldn't see it. I was trying to look for it, but there is a small staircase on the inside of the chandelier and it's so that workers can perform maintenance on over 100 lamps that help keep this thing dazzling. Now, at the time that the mosque was built, these were actually the biggest items, chandelier and handwoven carpet in the world. But upon finding out that they broke a world record, the UAE and Qatar have since installed bigger versions of these so that they could reclaim the title for themselves. That being said, I'll agree with what our volunteer guy said, and it's quality, not quantity. So we finished up at the mosque, which was absolutely beautiful, probably one of the prettiest ones I have been to. We ended up having to rent an abia because they said that my... Abaya. 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 Why do you listen to me and they just completely disregard what I say? <laughs> what is it? Abaya. 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 We ended up having to rent an Abaya because they said that my pants were a little too scandalous. But once you get inside, you see people that aren't covering their hair and their ankles are showing. And I don't really know. I think it's because we didn't decide to purchase a tour. So they wanted you to pay for something else since it's free admission. But I don't know. Anyway, we had to hustle out of there and grab some coffee and some food because we're hitting the road for our desert stay. And the views are just absolutely amazing right now. Check it out. Incredible. The modern day Bedouins right here on our steel camels. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan is to meet up with our driver because we can't take our rental car into the desert because it doesn't have four wheel drive. So we're meeting up with him at a gas station. We're going to switch cars, leave our rental car at a gas station, and then he's going to drive us. How far is it into the desert? I think it's probably like 30 minutes. It seems like our luck is still with us. And for our most expensive stay on this entire trip, where we're hoping to see this amazing empty sky, it's raining in the desert. 
You can see the rain clouds behind me. It's still pretty dark, but the, at least the rain stopped. Fingers crossed we had a clear sky tonight, although I'm just, I'm just gonna assume that we're not, and then I'll be surprised if we do. This place has seen better days. Gotta love the rain. All right, all the uh, other tourists that seem to be standing around here have been picked up by their respective Toy to Land cruisers, which seems to be the vehicle of choice out in the desert. Except for us. Back to waiting. Definitely some thunder going on in the background. And we are sitting here with all of our stuff. And no phone calls. So we finally got picked up. Um, there is a bathroom here that I tried to use before when we were waiting for our driver and these little boys followed me in. It was very weird. So I had to wait for Jeff to walk me and put our stuff in the car. So now we're just waiting to leave. Welcome to our desert stay. So we booked a luxury resort for tonight. We figured it would be our one chance to see the stars in a desert sky completely uninhibited by the light pollution that you get near cities. And unfortunately, as we've mentioned like seven times by now, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, it is raining. So we'll show you the next best thing, the thing that we were second most excited for, and that's our hotel room for the night. So this is our living room. And I know it actually looks like we're inside a building and technically we are, there are structured walls, but we are in fact in a tent. There is a tent with a center column right there that's holding everything up and the walls are just kind of here as dividers, which is really cool. So we've got a nice little sitting area with a little chest slash table. We have refreshments over here. Through our living room, the first place that probably most people are interested are what are the bathrooms like? So I think some of the other camps, they have communal bathrooms, but not this one. We have a nice attached private bathroom, which is super important for me. By the way, I'm wearing my chemin and I think it looks great. We have a nice sink, big mirror, toilet, bidet, it's not a Japanese toilet seat, but it'll do, and a beautiful walk-in shower, which is fantastic. So I'm sure we're gonna get some use out of that because it is sandy here. Lastly, we have our bedroom, which has a king-size bed. It looks super comfortable. There's electricity, obviously. I think they run off a generator and then maybe the power shuts off at midnight. But until that time, we get to charge our phones, which is useful because I had my maps running all day, even though there's basically only one major highway in Oman. So the bed is obviously great. This place is beautiful, but what really sold us is the view out of these windows. We've already got them opened up and just right out there you see the sand dunes and it looks incredible. We also have this interesting little back door which we're never gonna use because it's infested with ants but still kind of a view. Now obviously standing around in the desert could probably get a little bit boring. So the accommodation actually provides a bunch of different activities that you can do. Some are complimentary, like a free camel ride tomorrow morning for about five minutes between eight and 10 a.m. or going to the spa. However, they did offer us a five minute complimentary shoulder massage, which is kind of a nice touch. We also had something similar in the Maldives, which we really loved. You can also go, you know, dune trekking. You can ride into the desert for an hour. You can go visit a Bedouin house. So there's a ton of ton of stuff to do. However, we spent basically our entire budget of Oman staying here. So I don't actually think we're going to do many activities, but that's okay for us because really the magic of being here is being out in the desert and hopefully seeing the stars tonight. So we're just going to sit here and hope that the clouds move out of the way and we get some beautiful views later. At 5.30, they were supposed to pick us up so we could be the sunset on the top of a dune, but I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. But it's still really beautiful. It's stunning. It's nice and windy, but the rain has stopped. So I think we're going to be able to go watch the sunset. And if the clouds are anything to go by, I think they're moving this way, which means we should have potentially blue skies. There's like a little bit right there. So, oh man, I'm really hoping that we get to see some stars. We're up on the sand dune, ready for sunset. And the view here is just astonishing. I was reading before that this area, Wahiba Sands, it was named after a tribe and there's 10,000 square kilometers of sand in this desert. That's insane. So 
we're here and now we're waiting for the sunset. We got a primo spot because there is nobody behind us, but you have to walk pretty far to get the spot. So we're just hanging out and we got so lucky. I can't believe we're seeing the sunset today. So we're just chilling up here waiting for the sun to set. It's behind some clouds, but it does not take away from the beauty of this place whatsoever. And for some reason, we are completely surrounded by Swiss people. I hear Swiss German in every single direction. There's a Swiss couple over there, there's a Swiss couple over there, there's a Swiss couple over there, and there's a Swiss couple behind us. Jeff should probably mention that he is Swiss, and that's why he notices such things. Yeah. And all I want to do is know if any of these people are going to yass with me later tonight, and I think the answer is going to be a no. And if you don't know what yassing is, I don't either, so <laughs> don't It's like that. our national card game. survived Samageddon. We're back in the camp. We walked down and it was incredible. It was like the dunes were reshaping themselves in front of our eyes. Unfortunately, that meant they were also reshaping our eyes. I definitely got sandblasted and maybe got a whole new thing of LASIK that I wasn't paying for. And now we're just in the lounge. So we got pool table, foosball table, cool little sitting area. It's actually incredibly hot in here right now. I'm sweating. And we're looking at the drink menu right now. So a drink is looking like it's probably going to run about 15 US dollars just for the gin. That doesn't include the tonic. So maybe we'll grab some beer and wine. We're not sure yet, but we're feeling a little bit thirsty. There's so much sand all over me. I got a mojito, $13 USD. Jeff got a Corona. How much was your Corona? I don't know. Maybe like eight bucks, 10 bucks. That's crazy. <laughs> this is actually really good. Worth yep. every penny? Sure. So for our stay here, we decided to buy both dinner and breakfast. I don't know how much more expensive it is, but I would imagine if you're trying to bring your own food in, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Buffet style tonight. Ooh, man, this looks so good. They got chicken nuggies. We're back at the room. Just had an amazing buffet. They had a fantastic selection. And I am so stuffed, I think we're gonna call it a night. But we are gonna get up in just a little bit and we're gonna go outside and check the stars because it looks like some openings in the clouds have appeared and we should have a good view. That being said, it's not uh, a black sky. The moon is actually pretty bright tonight, although it's just a little sliver, a little crescent moon. So hopefully we'll still be able to get to see some cool stuff. Right now it looks already pretty great. So we're just gonna give it a little bit to get just a tiny bit darker. Morning from the middle of the desert. It does not stay dark here. <laughs> I think we we're both up at 6 a.m. just because the sound of the birds, if you can hear them, and the incredible light pouring through this little tarp above us. But it's a beautiful day, clear blue skies. We're gonna grow some breakfast, and then unfortunately, we probably gotta hit the road. We just wrapped up breakfast, and look what is outside. Hi, guys. So I've retreated to the shade because it's incredibly hot despite how early it is in the morning. What we learned about the camels is that only the females roam free and the males are normally kept tied up to stop unwanted breeding. So all those are females behind us and they basically just walk around and eat in the desert and then they're collected every night much like, I guess, cattle in Europe and in the US. The other thing that you'll notice is that they all have like their front two legs tied together and it's supposedly to stop them from like running away. So I know we said initially our plan was to ride the camels, but I don't think it's gonna happen. The line is super huge and we do need to hit the road, but don't worry, we are planning on doing this in Morocco. We didn't even know it was a thing here until we checked in, so we're not too heartbroken about it. And it's only like a five minute ride, which I think basically means you get on the camel, they maybe walk a few steps, they offer to take a photo, and then that's about it. And I'd rather have a more 
in-depth experience, I guess. Welcome back to Muscat. We stopped in Nizwa, we went to the souk, which is the word for market, and I bought myself a Kenjar, finally. This was like the one souvenir that I really wanted to get. We sat and we talked it over and we agreed that it's a really unique gift, well, souvenir, and it'd be a great way to remember this amazing country. So, bought one, it's beautiful, silver, and then we made the two hour drive back to Muscat, so that's two hours from the desert to Nizwa, and then another two hours to Muscat, so it's been a very, very long day. We're absolute beat, we had some stunning scenery um, it was a little bit dampened by the rain pun intended and our driver this morning who drove us back out of the desert was telling us that it's basically only rained this last week otherwise it's really rare and we were here for two days of it which is crazy last thing we got some food we were debating if we should get room service because we're actually pretty beat but the food here is so cheap so i went down the street to a good bob place i got this falafel plate this is a kebab I got three of these and all this was for Omani Real or basically 12 US dollars. It is nothing. So I'm gonna go stuff my face. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't already, please click that like and subscribe button to see where we're going to next as we continue on our Middle East adventures.